Hi friends, um, it's time for the next part of the one and only Ivan. So today we're going to start with the section called artists. Here in my domain, I do not have much to do. You can only throw so many me balls at humans before you get bored. A me ball is made by rolling up dung until it's the size of a small apple, then letting it dry. I always keep a few on hand. A me ball, for some reason, my visitors never seem to carry any. In my domain, I have a tire swing, a baseball, a tiny plastic pool filled with dirty water, and even an old TV. I have a stuffed toy gorilla too. Julia, the daughter of the weary man who cleans the mall each night, gave it to me. The gorilla has empty eyes and floppy limbs, but I sleep with it every night. I call it not Tag. Tag was my twin sister's name. Julia is 10 years old. She has hair like black glass and a wide half moon smile. She and I have a lot in common. We are both great apes and we are both artists. It was Julia who gave me my first crayon, a stubbly, a stubby blue one, slipped through the broken spot in my glass with a folded piece of paper. I knew what to do with it. I'd watch Julia draw. When I dragged the crayon across the paper, it left a trail in its wake, like a slithering blue snake. Julia's drawings are wild with color and movement. She draws things that aren't real, clouds that smile and cars that swim. She draws until her crayons break and her paper rips. Her pictures are like pieces of a dream. I can't draw dreamy pictures. I never remember my dreams. Although I sometimes awaken with my fists clenched and my heart hammering. My drawing seems pale and timid next to Julia's. She draws the ideas in her head. I draw the things in my cage, simple items that fill my day. An apple core, a banana peel, a candy wrapper. I often eat my subjects before I draw them. But even though I draw the same things over and over again, I never get bored with my art. When I'm drawing, that's all I think about. I don't know I don't think about where I am, about yesterday or tomorrow. I just move my crayon across the paper. Humans don't always seem to recognize what I've drawn. They squint, pack their heads, and murmur. I'll draw a banana, a perfectly lovely banana, and they'll say, it's a yellow airplane, or it's a duck without wings. That's all right. I'm not drawing for them. I'm drawing for me. Max soon realized that people will pay for a picture made by a gorilla, even if they don't know what it is. Now, I draw every day. My works sell for $20 a piece, 25 with a frame, at a gift shop near my domain. If I get tired and need a break, I eat my crayons. Shapes and clouds. I think I have always been an artist. Even as a baby, still clinging to my mother, I had an artist's eye. I saw shapes in the clouds and sculptures in the tumbled stones at the bottom of a stream. I grabbed at colors, the crimson flower just out of reach, the ebony bird streaking past. I don't remember much about my early life, but I do remember this. Whenever I got the chance, I would dip my fingers into cool mud and use my mother's back for a canvas. She was a patient soul, my mother. Imagination. Someday, I hope I can draw the way Julia draws, imagining worlds that don't yet exist. I know what most humans think. They think gorillas don't have imaginations. They think we don't remember our past or ponder our futures. Come to think of it, I suppose they have a point. Mostly, I think about what is, not what could be. I've learned not to get my hopes up. The loneliest gorilla in the world. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. I say I'm not cute anymore. He says I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass, they cluck their tongues, they frown while I watch TV. He looks lonely, they say. 
not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said, clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I understand them. It's not so bad. I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you can get used to almost anything. TV. My visitors are often impressed and surprised when they see the TV Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd. The sight of a gorilla staring at a at a at tiny humans in a box. Sometimes I wonder though, isn't the way they stare at me sitting in my tiny box just as strange? My TV is old. It doesn't always work. And sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll be watching anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies too. In romance, there is much hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoy old Western movies. In a Western, someone always says, this town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. In a Western, you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are, and the good guys always win. Bob says Westerns are nothing like real life. The Nature Show. I have been in my domain for 9,855 days alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a Western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved, the trees rustled. Then I saw him. He was a bit threadbare and scrawny and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. As suddenly as he'd appeared, the gorilla vanished and in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then a chubby water creature called a manatee. Then another animal and another. All night, I sat wondering about the gorilla. I'd glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, could there be a she as well? Or was it just the two of us in all the world trapped in our own separate boxes? We're going to stop there for today. I hope you enjoyed this next section of the story. I know Jake did. You might have heard him in the background shaking and listening to the story as we read it. Um, so what I want you to think about today, and you can head over to Seesaw to go write this or talk about it. If you were the owner of the big top mall where Ivan lives in his cage, Ivan talked about how sometimes he doesn't get many visitors. What could you do to attract more visitors to the mall? So can you think of an advertisement or something that you could do to get people to want to come to the mall? What would that be? Go ahead and share your thoughts on Seesaw. I'll see you later.